RadioBus.com now presents Facebook Live. Now live on Facebook.com and Radio Buzz, this is No Limit People with Dr. Will Horton. Hey everybody! Do you dream of a better life? Do you, do you dream maybe of a better body? Maybe more money? A better relationship? Maybe, <clears throat> you know, a new career? Whatever it might be. <clears throat> well, I want you to know it's not your fault you don't have it. <clears throat> you don't know what you don't know. <clears throat> as I say a lot, excuse me, as I say a lot, you know, you don't know what you don't know, as, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Chris likes when I say that, because you don't, it's beyond your conscious awareness. But we also know that it's not your fault that you don't have it, because again, if you don't know what you don't know, you have a dream, but you don't know how to get there. And we also know that there are people who make a lot of money um, by withholding information from us or, or giving us false information or not giving us the inside secrets. You know, it's in their best interest to keep us fat, poor, miserable, you know, and unhappy. So our job here at No Limit People is to give you some of the techniques and tips that seems like some of the high achievers have so we can help break through of all those limits. Uh, we're constantly revamping our little show and I'm working on getting some guests uh, in the next few weeks that are very well known in different fields. So it'll be a lot of fun. And today, though, I want to talk about something. You know, have you ever, uh, uh, we're going to call, I'm going to teach a technique that we can do. Let's do it that way today. Let's do something different. And this is to overcome a problem. And this is specifically, specifically, uh, when you stuck, when you're, excuse me, when you're working on a goal, when you're stuck and you're working toward a goal. You know, um, and we're going to use the neurology you already have, you know, based in your, neuro, your, your neurological system. Uh, you know, the big field now is neuroplasticity. Most people really don't know what it is, but it has to do with how your brain actually works and how it's much more fluid than we used to think it is. So what I wanted to talk about was how to use some of the neurology that you already have to help you overcome a problem that you're stuck in right now. Yeah, I, call it, I call it the victory technique. And for the victory technique to work, all you, obviously you have to have a stuck state. Maybe you're, uh, you need, you're working on your relationship, maybe your, uh, uh, your physical body, you're trying to lose weight or get in shape or something, uh, or your relationship or your career, but you're stuck. You're stuck right now. Now, if you're stuck, one of the problems is you can't see the forest for the trees. What happens when you're inside of a problem, that's all you can see is the problem. And when you're looking at it, the problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and there seems no way out. That's where that old saying, you know, you can't see the forest for the trees comes from, you know, and it really has to do with your neurology because when you're really focused on that, it means you shut down your peripheral vision. You've shut down all the externals and you're only focusing on this one thing. And those people that study the law of attraction, will tell you, you know, what you focus on grows. And that's actually based in your neurology, which is your reticular activating system. Because when you focus on something, that's when you notice it. Uh, Mr. Chris has heard me say this a few times, but it's like if you ever want a new car, or you fall in love with a certain kind of car, uh, suddenly you see that car everywhere. You know, the day before you wouldn't notice it, suddenly, you know, there's a Corvette on every corner or a BMW, whatever it is, right? Just like if you're attracted to one type of person, that's the kind of person you see everywhere. You won't even notice the other people. And that's the trick. It's not just that's what you notice, like the problem. You do not see the other options. You know, it's, I always use the analogy of, you know, if two guys, or it could be two girls, if they go out to a, uh, uh, and they're single, and they're looking, right? And they go to some place where there's a bunch of people, a club or something. And let's say one person likes dark haired, dark eyed people, and the other, you know, blonde, blue eyes, that kind of thing, right? Fine. So they go in and they're, they're in the club and they're messing, you know, they're networking and doing it. Let's say they split and they come back and they start talking. Oh, did you see this girl? Who? Well, the one that likes blonde, blue eyes wouldn't even be able to find the one that the dark haired, the guy that likes dark haired girl's wife and vice versa, because y your brain will just exclude that because you said this is not important. This ties into our victory technique, because when you're stuck in this, you're not seeing all of your options. 
So here's the technique to, to kind of open that up. Now for this technique to really work, when I, I call it the victory technique because I want you to think of a victory that you have, right? That you've had in your life in the past. Now it's a very specific kind of victory. This technique works best when you find a technique that you had to work for. You had to really work for, you know? And maybe if you want this technique to really kick butt, if you find a, a, a victory that you had that you almost quit a couple of times, you almost said, eh, screw it, I'm not gonna do it, right? I can tell you a couple, you know, that I, I always self-disclose a little bit too much, some people would say. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but from a therapeutic standpoint, it can be quite useful. But the two I'll talk, well, there's several, but when I went to get my psych license, you know, they, I had several setbacks. First of all, I had to jump through all the hoops to get there. And I kept saying to myself sometimes like, do I really want to do this? Do I want to get my license? I'm not really going to practice clinical psychology. I do hypnosis and NLP and all this other stuff. Yada, yada, yada. Right. But I kept jumping through the hoops because I thought it was, I, I knew it was important to me. And then I finished college, I finished the internship, I finished all the stuff I had to do, and then it comes studying for the exam. It's called the Examination for the Professional Practice of Psychology, the EPPP. Uh, little known fact, it has the highest fail rate of all the profession, or it did, of all the professional licensing things like doctors, lawyers, dentists, nurses. It always had the highest fail rate, right? So anyway, I start studying, and boy, I was stuck boy, I was stuck, right? I couldn't, I couldn't make it work. You know, I was studying, I was studying, you know, I so said, I went to take a practice exam, I blew it, right? And I'm like, ah, so I almost quit. Um, but because I'd already told a lot of people that I was going to do this, and many people said they didn't think I could, I said, well, I'm going to. So I kept working toward it. So then finally, I did all the steps, which we'll link back to at the end of this. Um, and um, I made it. I got my license. I remember opening the letter, go, ooh, you passed the exam, you passed the examination for the professional practice of psychology. And then when I got the second letter after I did the second test for the oral exam, ooh, you passed. I remember that feeling of victory. And I want you to think about a victory like that in your life. You know, it might have been making a sports team, it might have been getting a black belt, it might have been whatever it was, but you finally got it, hitting your goal weight, whatever it was. And there was a lot of work to get there. And there were probably those points where you said, I'm done, I'm it's not worth it. Right. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think of that victory. Really think of that victory. And as long as you're not driving, close your eyes and access what it felt like when you finally accomplished it. You know, when you got the letter, when you got the black belt, when you got whatever it was and you went, "Woo! I feel great. You know, access that feeling. And where in your body do you feel it? You know, maybe it's your heart. Maybe it's your stomach. Maybe it's wherever it is. Feel the feeling. What color pops in your mind? Are there any sounds, right? So notice all of these little things, see, hear, feel it, that you have. Great, you feel wonderful, right? Now make a fist mm, as, you're go, as you're thinking about, I'll just call it victory, right? Great, right? So you got that, Vic it could be either hand, victory, right? Great, now open your eyes, close your eyes. One more time, think about how you felt when you accomplished it. Now as you're feeling victory, I want you to also think about, look back in your mind's eye, all the work that you did to get there. All the work that you did to get there. It wasn't like, you know, it, it was an easy success out of the gate. This is one you had to work toward, right? So you're like, yes, and all that work paid off when you went, yay, and that's the thing that we're going for. Great. Now, here's what I want you to do. Because what's happened now in your mind, you, you have this neurological pathway of you know what you gotta do, you're working toward it, you know there's a lot of work as you're doing it, and then you get the payoff. That's what we're gonna tie into. That's, that's why this technique seems to work. So here's what I want you to do. Now I want you to close your eyes and think about this challenge that you have, maybe losing weight, maybe whatever it is, but you're kind of stuck, you're like, eh. And you might even be to that point like, eh, do I wanna do that? Remember, as you're watching this, if you like this, click like and share. Pass this around, write a comment, click like and share, pass it around and write a comment, please, uh, here and on Facebook, wherever you see it. So <clears throat> now access that feeling of like, eh, and think about the activity that you're trying to accomplish, whatever it is. Now, as you're feeling it, as you're feeling it, now I want you to think about 
the victory and squeeze the hand when you had a victory. And what I want you to notice is this. I want you to imagine in your mind, close your eyes and imagine in your mind that you're kind of parallel to the starting point of your victory trajectory, if you will, or your victory path, right? When you were stuck, when you were just getting started, maybe you're partially parsh the way there. You've made half your weight and you're stuck. Kind of like when you were going toward that victory, you were ready to quit. Like in my case, when I got the, when I flunked the test and I knew I had to take the test again, I did better, you know, the, the second time I took the, well, I did the practice test. Second time, the first time I took the test, I did better than the practice test, but I didn't make the cut, right? So I had to go back and study. So maybe you're there. So begin to see that this, that this challenge that you have is aligning, is aligning with the victory technique that you already have. Now, as you're thinking about that, now I want you to jump forward in your mind and think about how you're going to feel when you now squeeze your victory. We call this an anchor. So go like, yes, victory, squeeze your fist. And as you're doing that, imagine the victory you're going to feel when you've accomplished this goal, when you've overcome this challenge, when you've, <clears throat> when you've gone beyond where you were. Great. Now open your eyes, close your eyes. Let's do that again. Now think about the challenge that you have and where you're at on the path. And then as you squeeze the victory anchor, it will line up, so to speak, in your mind of where you were where in the victory path with where you are now, right? And then you realize to jump to the end, you're just gonna have to do the steps that you need to do so you can easily and effortlessly accomplish what you want to accomplish, right? So, and do this one more time. Open your eyes, close your eyes, good. Now this time as you're doing it, I want you to add one little tweak and that's take your tongue and put it to the roof of your mouth. So you're like touching it to the roof of your mouth. Again, as you think of the challenge that you have, you fire the victory anchor and see it align and know that what's gonna happen, imagine in your mind's eye, it's like a parallel highway running next to the other one. You know, it's just that you're working on, you're working, you're working on the second highway. It's in process. It's in process, right? So, you know, it's like you're on a highway and you see them working on a highway next to it. That's where you're at. You're not on the finished highway yet because you haven't done all the work, you haven't done the techniques, but you're, you're, you're in process. Now, take a deep breath, squeeze the victory, and know that you're in process and that, the, at the, that it's going to go forward. Now, we're going to do this technique one more time. I want to add some magic. That technique alone will work. I've done it a lot with a lot of people, excuse me, but we're going to add some magic. Because see, this really works, and I'm so excited about this. It really works on your neurology. That, I'm studying neuroplasticity and neurology again, right? And it really makes me excited. And here's a story to go with it. <clears throat> when I was studying <clears throat> for the psych exam, uh, it was hard for me to study. It was hard, right? I'd already been into hypnosis and NLP. Yes, I went and got my doctorate in psychology. So, yeah, but... Honestly, it was like, I don't want to do this. It's hard for me to do. So I really didn't have a strong, as, as our dear friend Tony Robbins would say, I didn't have a strong enough why, but I was doing it, you know, and I'm struggling and I'm doing this, you know, and I also found those things that I needed to do. You know, again, like when you think of your victory thing, I had to leave the house and go to the library and set aside, you know, an hour at a time to just study for my psych exam. But I was having a heck of a time, you know, especially when it came back the second time after I you know, I was working on it, <clears throat> that in my oral exam. I'm like, ah. So I went out and uh, flew to California and took a class, a practice exam. And because I needed to visualize it in my mind, what the test would be like, all the variables, first doing the written and then doing the oral exam. You know, what, what would be going on? Because uh, one of the things that happens if you study in a certain place, here's another brain hack for you, like a library or your, a certain room in your house, and you need to recall that information in another place. Like remember, you, if you were in school, high school, and you only studied in your bedroom, then when you walk in to take the class in the math, you know, in the math or the social studies, whatever it was, <clears throat> you can't remember the information because your brain compartmentalizes. If you can study in the, in the, in, in the place that you're going to take the test, it's going to be much more effective. Almost as effective would be if you kind of know what the room looks like. So if you have kids, if they're studying for a test, or if you ever have to study for a test, if you can kind of imagine what the room's going to look like. So when I took the practice exam, the first one, I'm like, okay, 
we got to sit in the room where we're going to take the or a room just like it it's just a big you know like college classroom you know with a couple hundred seats one of those you know with the theater style all that stuff but i had been in one of those for a while so i got to visualize it so when i would study when i'd go to the library and study i would sit there and picture being in that room recalling the information and this is going to all tie together in a minute because this is how your brain actually works right so that's a brain hack if you can visualize where you need the information it's kind of like when i talk oh mr it's kind of like when i talk about how you know if you want to remember a grocery list don't just stand in your at your refrigerator looking in the refrigerator going i need this this and this picture yourself walking through your grocery store and picking up the items that you need and that that increases the retention by over 50 percent so i knew all this right but i was still kind of stuck right and so finally i'm taking this one practice test and i got the guy that put the class on uh to be one of the proctors and i was talking to him and he goes um yeah you know, he's trying to motivate me and i'm like yeah you know and and without i don't know if he studied this or not but he did something brilliant he went didn't i because we talked you know, one of the breaks, that's why I got him to come over and uh, help me. He goes, didn't you say you were an actor? One of your big hobbies or thing is acting. I said, oh yeah. He goes, well, think of this like a play. All this information that you're, you're downloading into your brain, you may never use again. It, you know, when you learn to play, um, what's the last play I did? Later Life, a play called Later Life. You know, and I barely left the stage. So I'm on stage, you know, an hour and 15 minutes out of the hour and a half show. And had long pages of monologue and all that. But he, he goes, how many times have you walked out of the play when it closes and you're never going to have to remember those lines again? I said, well, almost every time. He goes, but is it important for you to learn those lines? I said, oh, God, yes. You don't want to miss a cue. You don't want to mess up your fellow actors. He goes, so just imagine, <clears throat> excuse me, that this is like a play. And so you're studying your lines, except that instead of lines, it's this material on, you know, the different psychotherapeutic techniques, the different, you know, psychological schools of thought, the different this, you know, even all, and it really helped me on the, like all the test variables and, and all this other stuff. He goes, it's just like you're doing a play. And he goes, in fact, then when you go to do the oral exam, uh, it's, it's not that you really have to be competent. Well, Dr. Will. He goes, you, they just have to think that you're competent. And I, and in my mind, I went, it's just like acting. And even though he kind of laid it out, then it made perfect sense. Then the only way I can describe it, it was more like butter. It was butter. I, it was much easier to do because what happened, I used an existing neural pathway or I aligned with the neural pathway I already had. I understood what it was like to spend hours studying your lines for a play just like mr chris could talk about spending hours practicing and practicing to learn a new song and the lyrics and everything great and once it's in there it's in there right that's why you know they always say in theater and i know i've heard musicians say the worst thing you can do is take a long break because then when you go back to try to learn it it's like ah you have to refire that pathway and so what this technique does is it finds a pathway that you've had a victory that you had to work toward and everything else so the uh, I, I tapped into like doing a play a lot of work uh, a lot of study time a lot of that and visual and then also too when you're studying a play you know you you learn to visualize yourself on the stage so once you get your blocking you know you're practicing where you're going to be when you say what where you're going to do when you do this where you're going to be all that so you're, you're visualizing in time, as I would call it, right? So then when you get up to do it, it's, it's all there. You picture the other actors, you do this. So when I started studying for the exam the second time after doing this, doing my little victory technique, it's like, okay, I could see other people. I couldn't see who they were, you know, because I didn't know who was going to be in the room with me, but I knew there were going to be a couple other people taking the test at the time I was taking the test, where I was taking the test, right? And then when I did the oral exam, I knew there would be two proctors there and myself. You know, and another person may come in and out. That's it, because I, I'd been there. So it would be like doing a play. And then it, it worked much, much better. You know, it kind of slid through. Because what happened was, again, like I said, I was, I, I was aligning with that neural pathway. I already knew how to get where I wanted to go doing this, right? So then, as I'm doing that, 
right? So then what I want to do is do a technique that goes with it, like runs parallel. So it begins to line up like that, right? So, excuse me, these things drive me crazy. I got to get the better headphones. Um, and the reason I use these, by the way, just uh, it blocks out the ambient noise. I, I would use my little fancy mic, but I got to get the one with the, that's more of a focus mic. Uh, Mr. Chris, help me with that. Anyway, so that's the, 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 the technique. Now here we're gonna add a bit of magic, we're gonna do it again. And what it is, is you're gonna add something that releases your conscious uh, glitching on what you're doing, your conscious pushback, if you wanna call it that. And it's right before you do the technique. In fact, if you're ever gonna do a self-help technique, a hypnosis technique, any kind of major growth thing, if you do this, it seems to increase the efficacy exponentially. And that's you take a deep breath and you say to yourself, I don't know how this works. I just know that it does. I don't know how this works. I just know that it does. And if you really want to add, you can look at it later to break down the points. You know, it's kind of like if you're, when I was working with weight loss people, you know, I had them obviously change their diet. We were doing the hypnosis, did a couple other things like that. Had them start exercising and do some other things. Now, was it just the diet? Was it the exercise? Was it the hypnosis? Was it the stress relief? Was it the focusing on the relationship? Maybe one of those was all they needed to do. Who cares? We, we do them all, and maybe in, in a synergistic way, it becomes even more powerful. So, but our brains are trained to try to figure out why, why, why. And for this, just let it work. So say to yourself, I don't know how this works. I just know that it does. And now again, now think of your victory technique. Anchor it, fire your, squeeze your hand and go, yes. And think about how you felt when you did it. And then think of all the work that you did to get there. Whatever the, whatever the victory was, you did a lot of work to get there. Great. Now open your eyes, close your eyes again, thinking, I don't know how. And now as you're thinking <clears throat> about your challenge, squeeze the victory and see that you're aligning, you're aligning right next to the victory pathway. And you're not there yet because maybe you're at the very beginning, maybe you're halfway there, but you know there's steps you got to take before you can get to that victory. And as you do that, then you can see, feel, and hear at the end of this thing when you're going to get the victory, it'll be the same type of victory. Good. Now open your eyes. Because what always happens, if you've ever had big victories in your life, it's surprising they feel pretty much the same. You know, uh, whether in my case, whether it was getting my black belt, making the freshman football team, uh, winning a tournament, uh, getting my psych license, things like that. Each one of those totally different, right? Or doing a great play where a guy's standing ovation. Each one of those totally different, but the feeling was the same because you're going for the feeling, you know? Uh, uh, Neville Goddard always said, you know, feeling is the key. So if you hang on to that feeling, it will push you towards it. So that's what I call the victory technique. And again, it's working on how your brain actually processes information. And I always think it's kind of fun and kind of fascinating uh, to do that. And again, you know, and when you look at, at how these things work in the real world, it, it, it's fascinating. And then I'm going to bring Mr. Chris on, talk to him for a moment. But I always think of like, you know, this is one thing I've seen actors do. It's like the first play you do is the hardest because you got to learn how to do the lines. You got to do this. Once you get that neural pathway in, it seems to be easier, right? Once you do your first concert, I've heard musicians say, that's the hardest. And it's not that you're still not going to work as hard. It's just part of it, you're developing a new neural pathway. And if you don't have that new neural path, if you don't have the, a pathway, your brain doesn't know what to do, right? And so if you find a similar one, it's going to lock in and go with that. So that is what I call the, the victory technique. You can do it whenever you want. Again, you can go to drwillhorton.com um, or, or shoot us a message here and we'll get back to you. I, I got the steps written out if you want the steps. Um, and again, if you like this, click like and share on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, same thing, click like share and make sure you add a comment pass this around that's how you go viral uh so mr chris did that make sense to you about the 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 the, 
like learning music and all that? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think that okay. technique can be used in all kinds of different scenarios. Absolutely. Well, and another one, I, when I was thinking, I knew I was going to do that this today, and I've been working with somebody, and I was watching a football game last night, and I, I <clears throat> thought back to Sunday, day before, a couple of days ago, when the football games were on, and there was one person talking about he'd been through different coordinators, and somebody said, wasn't that hard? And they, and they actually said, well, the first one was really hard. And then it just gets progressed. Yeah, maybe the numbers switch, even odd, you know, whatever, some of the terminology. But, you know, it's football. You're running this way, you're hitting this person, you're doing this and you're doing, but the way he broke it down, but I still remember him and I wish I had caught the guy's name. The first one was hard. And, and it makes me think when you see some of these elite athletes, when they change teams or they get a new coordinator, they seem to pick it up better than the young guys, you know? It's also why the guys moving up each level, high school to college, college to pros, there's always that adjustment period because your brain's searching for the right pathway and in many cases we have to create it i would ask mr chris one question like mm -hmm. if i ask him to totally play a different kind of music you know um to, what would be a totally different kind of music mm. that's a hard question because i've played all kinds of different kinds of music um okay but classical would probably be like the most difficult because you know well, you want to play it exactly the way they wrote it but I bet you, you could pick it up, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Because you, you, you have the neural pathway. I think of this, then I'll shut up, and then we'll close. Because I was watching this country girl, this country singer, and she actually sang opera also. And she goes, the hardest thing she had to do was to get the people that were casting because she would show up, and they knew her as a, like this country star. And when she talked, she had a little bit of a twang. And they're like, you could never sing opera and all that. Mm. She's like all these British people sing French opera or Italian opera. It, it, it's crazy. And till they heard her sing and she made the comment, it's singing, it's notes. There's 12 of them in different. <laughs> 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 and she goes, if I could do it in country, I could do it in opera, you know, and the way, and I'm like, wow, it's kind of what we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the pathway, find a pathway close to it because your brain can generalize. It's a wonderful organ that's evolved through millions of years to do this. So this is uh, Dr. Will Horton at No Limit People and State. Uh, next week, we'll probably have a couple, we'll have a guest. I'm working on getting some different guests and we're gonna have some fun, some experts and things like The Secret and other things. So we'll have some fun with this. So until next week, have a great day. This has been No Limit People with Dr. Will Horton. Join us each Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here at Facebook Live and RadioBuzz.com.